Welcome back, guys. It's the Brothers Geek Out podcast, and I've got a special guest on today. I want to introduce to you guys Neil from Get Your Comic Con. Is that right? That is Get right. Your Comic Con. That is yeah, correct. Get Your Comic Con. <laughs> How you been, Neil? You're right. I am. I'm good. It's so nice to see you. It's been so long. It has been. I'm. I think the last. Uh, oh, Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah, that was the last one time we saw each other. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. we got to see each other halfway through. Halfway through, uh, yeah the pandemic that we went through uh with the whole world but uh yeah no i'm glad you're well and safe and it was good to see you there at that event yeah, I can't yeah, wait it was good for to see your friendly face more to more to come i'm i'm hoping for i it 17th of yeah. may all the cinemas over i'm so excited we're about two weeks away oh man so excited to get back into the big screen because as much as i've enjoyed watching things from home i genuinely miss the cinema yeah me too it's been uh, so weird watching stuff that should be on the big screen, but yeah. watching it at home, it's it was just, just like it's surreal. It, 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 it was, it was, because I felt like, oh my God, we've got all of these screeners and things to watch online. And mm, I mean, yeah. we recently did uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League and I was like, oh my God, I know it's four hours, but I would have loved to see that on the biggest screen, yeah. like just to like, I could imagine all of us at home now geeking out completely going crazy as we were watching it yeah. in your own comfort. But it would have been nice to kind of share that with everybody else. That's the thing. And it's the same with um, Godzilla versus Kong as well. Um, that film just needs to be seen on a big screen. That's so right. as amazing as it is to get that kind of opportunity to see it before everyone else, watching it at home just doesn't have the same magic. And it's no. it's Mortal Kombat week as well. So uh, ah. the I know from Warner Brothers that they're going to be sending around copies of it um, tomorrow. And again, ah. that, it just needs to be seen on a big screen, but it's going to be watched at home. Yeah, no, I was I was actually kind of gutted with Godzilla versus Kong because of because sometimes if it if it's not streamed off the tv itself then you're not going to get the sound quality but because it was through the yeah. laptop yeah and i had to connect it to the tv and then i was like suddenly virgin wants to mess up and it doesn't want to work with their vpn oh no <laughs> and i had actually tethered that film uh from my mobile internet and watched it through the laptop through the tv wow. sorry yeah well it was connected to free devices oh my god uh yeah, but yeah, the things we do... I was about to say the same thing, the things we do to be able to watch these things. <laughs> the things we do. Uh, but Neil, can you let the listeners know a little bit about what you do and, like, yeah, like what you do and then where, where we can yeah. find you because I want to start plugging straight away, basically, even though okay. everything's in the description. But yeah, let us know. So you can find all of our reviews and stuff on the website, which is www.getyourcomiccon.co.uk. Uh, there is, I think, nine of us at the moment that are doing comic book reviews, film reviews, TV reviews. You've got our podcast, which is fortnightly as well. So that's on all your major platforms. So Apple, Spotify, all of those. Um, again, just call Get Your Comic Con. Uh, what else we got? We've just we're trying to push youtube stuff at the moment cool. so we've been doing this little kind of like weekly news roundup video thing that goes on twitter and there's now like a longer version like a longer edit that goes onto youtube as well so if you've you know you've had a busy week and you're not quite up to date with all the news and stuff come and watch me or one of the other guys on the team for sort of 10 minutes just telling you about all the big stuff that's been going on this week so you can find us absolutely everywhere just at get your comic con no, nah, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's it. When so I'm I'm because I've met you a couple of years back, and I'm just thinking. I was thinking about this yesterday when yeah. we first met. I think it must have been. I can't remember if you were at the same press screening of it as me. I was it Aquaman. Yeah. So I went to. Aqu yes. I I wasn't at the premiere, but I was at a press screening that was a few days later. Um, and I was hanging out with Paul from DC World that night because he was kind of like the only person I knew at the time. I'm sure that must have been it. Yeah, I'm thinking it's the it's the same same time as well. Definitely must be this. My God, the time has gone by so quick. Because that's like three years ago, wasn't it? Can you believe it? Three years ago. Oh my God, yeah, it went by very very quick. So, yeah. how long have you been doing this for now? So, the very first version of this under this name is going to be nine years old this year. Wow. Yeah. So nine years awesome. nine years ago. Um, we went to San Diego for the first time um, yeah. 
And it was, we did it kind of backwards. We booked a holiday really, really cheap to go to San Diego before tickets went on sale for Comic-Con. Never been to Comic-Con before. Um, and then didn't get tickets to the convention, but still had the holiday. So went and had like an amazing two weeks in San Diego, got back and it was a bit like, oh, it was kind of sad because we were there at the exact same time. And That's we stood right. outside that convention center, like looking through oh, the door and we could see nice. everything inside. And it was like, like, you're like this close to being in <laughs> like the Mecca of comic conventions. Yeah. So we got back and that year it was it like Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con always falls either just before or on my birthday. So yeah. it was just before my birthday and we were out with friends on my birthday after we got back and they were all like, oh, just like start writing about comic books. Just like start a blog, write about comic books and like guarantee you like that, you'll get a press pass. I was like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, <laughs> a few drinks later, that seems like a really, really good idea. And that was it. The next day, it was, that was a thing. It was a Tumblr blog for like a, yeah. I think about a year. Um, and I was writing just, I wasn't doing like new stuff. There was no podcast, nothing like that. We weren't even doing social media. Uh, it was just me writing about comics. Wow. So I did it for about a year and then I think fell away from it a bit. So I was like, well, what, what, what am I actually doing this for? Am I ever, this is never, like I had no major ambition to do any of the stuff I'm doing now. Um, mm. So I drifted away from it for like 12, 18 months and then just had this, like, just something in the back of my mind was like, do you know what, you should go back to that. So I did shifted it from Tumblr to what's now the WordPress, like actually bought the web address and stuff so that yeah. it was a bit more official, did the social media thing and then just slowly but surely stuff starts building and then you're like you know what I I quite like podcasting maybe we should give that a go and then yeah. start buying like microphones and then you suddenly like you're building up stuff and you're like this is actually this is really good fun and I so years ago so my degree I actually did a film production degree and I've got a master's in script writing so I've kind of a film like kind of background so I spent a lot of time editing and stuff so I was just like you know just doing a little bit of video stuff on just you know like flexing the muscle on using premiere and stuff yeah. just and then suddenly here here we are wow really? that's like absolutely awesome and the team grew in in the process as well yeah majorly so again never so screenings were never a thing that i ever expected to happen mm. or anything kind of been sent my way as a as a as a freebie to do with any mm. of the stuff i was writing about and having anybody else work with me was never a never a thing i ever envisioned but <laughs> Along the way, people are just like, do you know what? Can I give it a shot? And I'm like, yeah, sure, just join in. Do you know? If I can share what I get with people, it's great. That's amazing. That's 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 the main thing for me is sharing that with other people, yeah. and yeah. and that excitement in it as well. Because I feel like I don't know. Depending on what type of things that you do, uh, I feel like with when I was when I started my journey, it was just based on art. Yeah. And, all, and it was just for fun. I was just drawing for fun. And, you know, you started seeing people interested and asking things. And I think yeah. I'm coming on seven years now with Kibla Ahmed Art. And somebody said, why don't you, same thing as well. Kibs, why don't you do how-to videos on YouTube? And kind of went into, it, it kind of, it, it drifted again because it was doing how-to videos. Then it went into, trailer reactions yeah. and then movie reviews and you know the podcast started on the youtube channel uh, and only recently we started to just grow on other platforms and i was like oh my yeah. god like it's never ending because i don't actually like looking at my phone no more and like after seven o'clock tonight that's 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 to the side but i know something will happen <laughs> oh bless <laughs> yeah. so this is oliver he likes to join in on everything oh bless, bless. named after oliver queen no less <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, so it just kind of just was like, oh my god, you know what? I've I'm still doing the art, but I think the podcasting yeah. is something that I've really, I've just enjoyed really just geeking out with everybody, to be honest. Yeah, and, and that's been the fun part of it. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 as you said, it's a journey, isn't it? It just it just kind of just grows, doesn't it? I kind of feel like when you look at some of the, or if you look at the people that we know, um, mm. I think the people that end up being the most kind of successful or doing really well and engaging with an audience really well are the people that aren't sort of trying to force it i think yeah. if you if you just act, if you actually enjoy it and don't push yourself too you know out of your comfort zone too much or that's right try and if you, you know if you focus on if I, I i don't tend to look at our website visitor numbers all that much or mm. our podcast listener numbers that much mm. and i find that when i do i have less fun doing it that's whereas right. if i'm not looking at it 
then I can just enjoy it. And people enjoy engaging with it more because they can hear that you're enjoying yourself. Of course. And, and, and I think that's the major piece, though, because we, we're in a society now where numbers and the amount of hearts you get on something plays a yeah. big part in somebody's insecurities, which is, is something that I kind of like to pick up on each podcast is like, don't worry about that stuff. Cause, yeah, exactly. You know, the algorithms are not built for human beings. It's, it's, that's the, that's the, 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 the machine, that's cybernet doing it, doing its work. Yeah, exactly. Just, exactly. The more, the more you love it and people see that honesty in it, that's how you're going to engage with people. And even if yeah. it's one person that says, Kibla, that made me laugh today. Your job's done. That's rewarding. And that's itself. exactly how I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody, uh, there's somebody on Twitter uh, called at the Batman Stan who, um, joined twitter and then tweeted at us to say i joined twitter just to tell at get your comic on i love your podcast <laughs> yeah. right, there you go my job is my job is totally done not only did someone <laughs> listen to it and enjoy it but they decided to join twitter to tell me that they enjoyed it that's, that's great that's, that's all amazing I need. that's absolutely amazing oh my god that's so cool oh man that's that's so that's that's a really nice journey so oliver yeah. i mean well you know you named oliver yep uh, was there a reason for that is, is it- I, can't, I don't I can't remember why it was I mean I, I was Arrow was a big thing for me at the time um yeah. um and then there was just something about it that I was like you know what we we so we'd been to the a couple of cat shelters looking because we would, we decided we were going to get cats yeah. um and we'd seen two brothers before so we have two we have a boy and a girl so Oliver and Felicity yeah. um oh. and we'd seen a couple of uh brothers before that who I'd said well they have to be called Oliver and Diggle I obviously had Arrow on the mind at the time <laughs> oh he's, like, so I'm, he's my little shadow he tends to follow me absolutely everywhere so working from home has been fun for the last sort of two years because <laughs> literally everyone at my day job is just like can we see the cat can we see the cat please we don't really care oh, about you bless. can we see the cat <laughs> so every time you're on a zoom call yep it's it's always where's the cat oliver oliver t- steals the show basically yeah yep, that's how it works <laughs> so Neil, because I, I know you, you do your day job and then you do your superhero stuff in the evening. Yeah. How do you schedule yourself with stuff like that? Because I think listeners would find that, you know, I think scheduling is a big key in what we do. It is. And it's, how do you... it, it's really, it's something that I've struggled with a lot just because hmm. we do, as well as doing the kind of the review thing and the podcast thing, we do try and keep up with news as much as possible. Because what I found in the early days was, People until people kind of get to know you as a person and kind of know the things that you like and kind of then get an idea for what how you might come at reviewing something. I no. don't find you pick up that many kind of readers on a website per se. But where you hook them in is if you're covering news that they're interested in. So trailers, casting announcements, all that kind That's of stuff. Right. So doing reviews is not so bad because you know, you know when a film's coming out, you know when you're gonna get to see it you kind of have that idea that you can schedule yourself around like a film release but with with news it can happen like who knows what's happening while we're on here right now like my phone's probably going to go in a minute and say henry cavill signed a new contract to make five new superman movies (laughs) max Snyder's justice league 2 is on the way um so the way i this is probably the wrong way to say it but i've been quite lucky during the pandemic because i've been working from home and because i've got more of a team now so the way we work it at the moment is so I, I generally do my hours between eight and four for my day job. Yeah. So I'll get up at sort of half six, seven, see what's happening, what's happened overnight. We've got a Slack channel that all the team members are, are signed up to. So I will right. just throw up on there everything that needs to be covered that I haven't got time to write before I start. And then let everyone just take their picture in the day and write it up. And then okay. when I've got a break, I will do stuff as much as I can. On days when I go into the office... This is this is when things get a bit crazy. When things when I'm on an office day, I will I don't really leave the house at seven. So I will get up at five and I'll do like an hour, hour and a half before I get ready for work of anything that needs doing from overnight. Go do the day job and then start again when I get home. Basic I've just gotten into this routine that it just needs it needs to get done. So it gets done when it gets done, basically. Of course not. And 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 it's because of that motivation and determination of getting things done is it is such a yeah. great thing. And it's as you said, it's, it's a hard, I suppose at the beginning, it was a really hard graph to, to do that because you're like, I need more hours in the day. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, at this point, so my, my day, my day job is a sort of a 40 hour week. 
And mm. on average, I think Geico is like another 20 hour week on top of that. I wouldn't be surprised. I would not yeah. be surprised at all. I would not be surprised. But then I wouldn't and change it for the world because of the the opportunities that it's of course, it's of course, afforded me. just insane. It's weird, you know, because like in like in the past month or two, like some of my hard work has like genuinely paid off like really well. And then something came up yesterday, and I spoke to my wife, and I was like, "What do I do? Like, how do I do this?" And the thing is, I I I'm not going to give. I can't give it away now until it's actually <laughs> confirmed. But it was like, you know, every it's like it's like waiting for the bus and you've been there for half an hour, nothing comes, but you decide to walk to the next stop and then all five of them come at once. You're like, yeah. how the hell did that happen? And why did that happen to me? But, you know, blessings uh, in disguise, but hard work is, it, it, it does pay off. But I still put the time in. And as you said, you schedule things like, yeah, during my nine to five, I'm still looking after my little one. So yeah. waking up at that extra hour early to figure out what sketches I'm going to do on the day or what we're going to talk about on the next podcast or yeah. what I'm going to design next. Or which, if I'm doing uh, work for a client, if I don't schedule that time in, then I kind of go, go all over the place. But then, as you said, news, when that stuff comes out and you've got to be on top of it. Yeah, it's that's I really a hard like one. It because. The, there's a there's a few guys that do new stuff so a few of the team that work with me do just yeah. do review stuff and then there's a few that do new stuff as well and I'm really lucky that they're the kind of people that I can just chuck out like a whatsapp message to and go do you know what I genuinely don't have time can you can you do this and they'll 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 do their best to always get that stuff out for me if I can't do it myself that's awesome that's and then there's awesome. like literally just off camera, I've got my whiteboard on the wall. So it already tells me what's in next week's podcast with notes of what's in the next one after that. And then just a <laughs> list of everything and who's working on it in terms of reviews at the moment. Because I, I have to try and keep track of it somehow. <laughs> no, of course you, you have to. I, if, if I don't look at my to-do the, to do list yeah. every day, I'm in trouble. Uh, but it's always in my face so that I know. Uh, because last week I did make a mistake and actually the week before uh so i had a i'd done a podcast with a musician it went really well we vibed so good it was such a great interview and the recording it oh, didn't it did it corrupted and i was like oh my the god first nightmare and then you know i contacted zoom and i went through the palaver there and then said all right i have to tell the person that it didn't record and ask him if he can do it again and which he was happy to do, and we did that. I forgot. I completely forgot. I had it written down, and I just forgot. Oh, no. And then he forgot as well. And then I messaged <laughs> him the following day, and I said, dude, I am so sorry. I completely forgot. Anyway, luckily, with the, the way the universe works, so in my day job, I am a vendor manager for a marketing team for an IT reseller, and we deal with education. No, I recently got a contract where I become Zoom's uh, vendor manager. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my way in to ask, uh, you know, I lost a recording last week. Can you kind of help me out? I got the recording back. Amazing. Yeah, they, they, I don't know how, but they got the recording back for me. So it's weird how like the universe kind of just yeah. did a 360 and come back to me so I, um, yeah my, my worst one so one of the one of the opportunities that's really only come up in the last couple of years um yeah. is with the dc animated movies i've been really lucky enough to get to interview quite a lot of the the creative kind of writers directors and yeah. cast members and the first one that i had interviews for was justice league dark apocalypse war yes i remember that one so i got to interview um uh, Jason O'Mara that plays Batman. We had uh, Matt Ryan who plays Constantine, and then we also should have had Chris Gorham who voiced the Flash. Uh, and it was my it was the first time I'd done interviews, literally the yeah. first time. And with Warner Brothers, the way it works is it's um it's not a Zoom call, it's a Skype telephone call. So you oh. can't record it through the system itself. You need to third party record it. So. Oh. I thought I'd figured out all my technology and stuff and I got the Batman interview and we got the Constantine interview, but Flash just didn't record. It recorded me, oh. but it didn't record him whatsoever. Oh. I felt so bad, so, so bad afterwards. Thankfully, they forgave me because they still allow me to do interviews now, but it was it was just it like my heart sank. I was like, oh, my God. All I've got is 10 minutes of me going, yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me about... 
yeah, 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 yeah. Oh God. So I do love those videos. I do love those videos. Cause now I try and double record everything, but yeah, me too. I kind of just kind of like need to stay calm and not panic. I think I've become less panicky before like a, a podcast or if I'm interviewing somebody and just saying, you know what, let it just, it'll be fine. Just stay calm. You've got like five recordings going on. Yeah. You'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure you'll capture something. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've kind of got around the tech tech part of things. But yeah, that must have been, oh, it was heartbreaking for me. I remember telling them, I was like, dude, it didn't record. And we were on it for like an hour and a half. <laughs> and it was like such a good vibe and session. And I was like, you don't, you, sometimes it's, there are, there've been, I've been, I had a podcast uh, this uh, like earlier on. And it was so hard because it was his first podcast as an artist to come on. And I was like, genuinely, like, just chill out, relax. I'm not going to ask no stupid questions. It is going to be, it's going to be comic book related. What do you, like, what am I going to suddenly say? Like, he, he was really nervous. And I was like, and then he kind of chilled out like 10 minutes into it. Cause I kind of babbled on a little bit. He was like, okay, you know what? This is easy. Kibbs is doing all the talking anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the thing I find uh, with interviews, um, do, I love doing stuff like this where I just get to talk to someone yeah. especially when it's someone that I know as well because you're you're just at ease from the beginning but the thing well, with like, the Warner Brothers interviews uh, which always kind of gets me is you literally have a 10 minute window and I was kind of lucky because I just did ones for Justice Society World War Two recently yeah and I got to talk to the writer Jeremy Adams and I was first to interview him so we had a couple of minutes before we had to hit record where we just got to chat so it was kind of like okay I could kind of wind myself down but then um I interviewed Matt Bomer, who is like the biggest name that I've interviewed. So, you know, I mean, he's Larry from Doom Patrol. Everyone knows Matt Bomer. <laughs> yeah. um, and I had to, he was running slightly late. So the per when I logged into the call, I could, I got to hear the end of the interview from the person before me, which <laughs> you could kind of, on one hand, you could kind of take that as a couple of minutes to sort of take your breath and calm down. But I'm, right. I'm sitting there going, she's asking questions that I'm going to ask. He's going to be thinking, oh, great, I'm getting asked the same question again. And I'm like, okay, just take a breather. It's fine. He's a professional actor. <laughs> <laughs> he gets asked the same questions all the time. He's used to it. Do but you say just... that? Sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, so I was going to say, um, so it's just, I, I do find when I've only got 10 minutes and it's somebody that's a bit more high profile, I do still get a bit nervous, but you, you settle in pretty quickly. Yeah, that's just that's that's exactly what I was going to say about the nervousness. Like, yeah, you've been doing it for a good couple of years now, and doing the podcast as well. Yeah, does it come any easier? I think the hosting of the podcast definitely. I feel yeah. really at ease doing that now. I think probably if I was to listen back to some of our early ones, it probably wouldn't sound anywhere near as kind of smooth as it does now. Uh, the interviewing thing, I definitely think I'm getting better at. It's, do you know what I think it is? I don't think I'm nervous about talking necessarily maybe to the person all the time. It's more, I'm nervous that I want to get it right. It's yeah. kind of, I just don't want to, I don't want to, I mean, I have to pinch myself so I get the opportunity in the first place because let's That's face right. it, I'm talking to people that we've like watched on TV and grown up with and That's whose right. artwork we love. Yeah. So that's madness because I'm I'm not talking to them as, you know, like a, a paying customer at a convention or something like that. I'm actually getting the opportunity to kind of be one-on-one -on -one with this person. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does get easier, but I find with the high profile names, I do still get a little bit nervous just because I'm a bit like, Am I really talking to like Matt Bomer? Is this like, <laughs> yeah. is this real? Yeah. And that's that's the thing I find with this whole thing, even with going to screenings and stuff, is it's just a bit like, is this really like, did me starting this thing nine years ago really lead to a point where I'm spending my days talking to Warner Brothers and Sony yeah. and Disney? It's it's mad. No, of course I, I, I don't. I don't. It's 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 overwhelming sometimes because it is. <laughs> For me, my one was the first one was the first one for me was Michael J. Fox. This was like five years ago, mm. and it was when the 30th anniversary, and I tried to get tickets to to meet him at London Film and Comic Con and Christopher Lloyd and all of them. Like, yeah. And I remember being at the computer when they announced it, and like trying to log in and click the tickets and had my credit card ready. And it, it just crashed. The website just crashed. And I was like, oh my God. And like, you know, spending, I spent maybe like an hour or two just thinking the website's crashed and 
calling customer service like what's happening and they were like it's yeah. just a web it's an influx of people like and then they were like the tickets are sold out and i'm like <sighs> what and i was like you know the old the two guys that i want to meet from my my favorite movie in the world and it didn't happen and then i was like i looked on StubHub, i went on ebay people were sending <laughs> anyway you can like, yeah like i think it was like two grand three grand and i was like people wow. are paying for this is this like really happening and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. Anyway, I had to let go of it. I said, oh, it's not going to happen. I'll go to the Comic-Con, though. Uh, but I'm not going to get the chance to meet the guys I want to meet. And the way uh, I love the universe and suddenly the way the I did a like a 30th anniversary animation of uh, Michael J. Fox and uh, Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. And a friend of a friend called me saying kibs i saw your uh anime uh, sorry your your drawing online and i could only think you're the only person i that i could invite you to come meet michael j fox and christopher lloyd and i was like who are you again <laughs> like who is this and he used to work for a magazine back then uh i can't even remember i think it's called it was one of those uh nuts magazine he used to work for oh wow one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He worked for Nuts Magazine and he was like, look, they've, they've given me tickets. Uh, I've got plus one. We, I'm a Back <laughs> to the Future fan. Do you want to come? I'm like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what to say. I still don't believe this. Can you hold the line for a second? Let me call you back. And then called my friend and said, dude, did you pass my number on to one of your mutual friends? He was like, yeah, he was been bugging me for like two days because he knows you're a Back to the Future fan. And I was like, I can't thank you enough. Yeah. It's like, praise the Lord, this happened. And I, I got the chance to meet Michael J. Fox. And like, it was overwhelming because I was willing to pay for that experience just to meet yeah. my favorite actors uh, for it to kind of come back 360 because of an image that I drew and somebody said, oh my God, that's so cool. is the perfect person to go and meet. And then uh, overall, then you had Aquaman and then yeah, it's been like a roller coaster of loads of events happening, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is absolutely mad." Because I think we'd barely gotten over Aquaman when we went to that fairground for Shazam. I mean, that was madness. Yeah. That's right, exactly that, exactly that, and that was such a good one as well. And even the, even with having them all up on stage as well, I was like, yeah. "This is still very unreal." Like, I'm not believing this is happening. So, yeah. it still to this day kind of keeps me. Even though I'm grounded, I still feel like, oh my God, I still can't believe this is happening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I, I, I really appreciate some of the things that I've got to do. Like I, I'd never thought, if I, when I picked up a comic book when I was six, seven years old, that I'd be doing stuff like this. Yeah, same. Absolutely. Absolutely the same. So that moves on to my first geeky question, uh, which I have put down. Hopefully I haven't forgot it but what was your first experience with comic books and okay, heroes so, um if if my uh, my family is to be believed then pretty much my first word was um was batman when oh, i was wow. a kid um <laughs> so my kind of my earliest memory would be batman 89 so i was i was only four when that came out so i didn't I didn't see it in cinema or anything because I think it was a 15 back then. I didn't get to see a Batman at the cinema yeah. until Batman Forever. Uh, but I, I remember family going to see it and I can remember people, I'm obviously even before that must have just been sat in front of the TV watching like Adam West's Batman reruns or something. So clearly I was a Batman fan before I can even remember. Um, mm. And then I can remember family being like, you, oh, you get, just wait till you see this movie. And then buying me it on VHS. And the <laughs> earliest toys that I remember getting given for my birthday that year were like a Michael Keaton Batman with a utility belt that was like a grappling hook. So you used to like hook the utility belt on and he would climb up. And then there was a, I had him and I had a Joker that had like um, a water cannon. So you squeeze yeah, the thing right, on his back squeeze. and it would spray out through the, the flower. <laughs> um, so that was kind of, so it was, it's always been Batman since I was a kid. And yeah, my first comic books were um, this like kids series called, I, I think it was I, it was either I learned to read with Batman or I love to read Batman. And it was, oh. but I don't think it was like a DC thing. It was obviously licensed from DC, but it hmm. was it was kind of one of those ones that you could pick up in like a supermarket or WH Smith's. That's and it right. was all, 
in the style of uh, Batman the Animated Series, but it was just like stories for really young readers. Wow. Oh. And then here's one of my universe small world moments. Uh, so one of my sisters at the time was living in London, not, not that far from where I live now, actually. Yeah. And I came to stay with her when I was about maybe seven or eight and got my first kind of adult comic book. Uh, and it's like since completely disintegrated because it's been read so many times. <laughs> and all I, all I could remember about it, because I, it's been long gone for years, was that it had some kind of like Dracula story or like vampire story and then a Batman story. And lo and behold, I have a copy. <laughs> I prepared That's this in case you asked this question. So oh. I discovered that it was this uh, like Batman random collection from, I think it's 19... Nine, so this is 1991. Some of this was published. Amazing. And it's just like, it's called Batman The Legend Continues. And it's got a classic tale about vampires. And then this crazy, like, it says, Batman's down in the mouth with the fear. And then there's some stories about the American Civil War. <laughs> but it's like proper classic 90s pulp Batman. Um, oh, so I finally, awesome. after years, have a copy of it again, thanks to eBay. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I do love eBay. I do love eBay. So... So Batman's your main guy then? Is that your favourite superhero? Yeah, he's always been my main guy. I kind of, I I always, always gravitated to that kind of hero character more than say like the mm. Supermans of the world. Yeah. I, I prefer the kind of vigilante character. Uh, yeah. So it was always DC for me as a kid. I just, everything was DC for me. Marvel, I watched like the 90s Spider-Man cartoon and like the classic Hulk cartoons and stuff, but yeah. I didn't really read any of their comics until I was older. It was mm. always it was always DC for me. For me, DC was the first comic book. My uncle gave me my first uh, DC comic, which was Superman, 1982, 1983. I was, I think it was by John Barnes. It was like a six-part miniseries of called The Man of Steel. Yeah. I think it's everybody's favourite. I, I designed a poster based on it because that's how much mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, and... Yeah, so that was the first one. So Superman's always been the guy for me, but over, over the years, it's always bounced between Iron Man, Batman, and Wolverine. Hmm. Yeah, That's, so it's, it's never know. been one. I, it's definitely, Batman is definitely my clear front runner. I don't know who I would put in second place. I think it varies for me. There's yeah. a lot of like, uh, so like we've got... Um, a kind of Robin trilogy on the wall. So That's there's like, like a, yeah. there's a, there's a Tim Drake... Uh, and then Dick Grayson, Nightwing, and then a Red Hood that's on the wall behind me here. So Robin's quite a strong factor in our family as well. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man has got to be my favourite Marvel character. I think yeah. I'd probably say Batman and then Spider-Man as a close second. Mm, that's good. That's actually pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, so whose powers would you take then? Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, yeah. Ah, you stumped me. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I'd probably have to go Superman on that one. The ability to fly. You've got to, you, just once, just the ability to fly like that. I know, I know. I think flying has always been a part of one of my things. But I don't know, I've always, I've, I've, as I've grown older, I've become more, I want, I want, I want Wolverine's healing powers. <laughs> yeah, that would actually, yeah, 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 yeah. The older I get, that could be quite useful, actually. I want, I want his healing powers. Uh, I, I'm, I, it's too much now because I'm like, well, actually, I don't want to expose my age on here, but yeah, I'm old. Uh, I feel it. I do feel it. So Wolverine has like really drawn, uh, drawn. His, his powers have drawn to me now. I, I want immortality now <laughs> and healing powers. <laughs> yeah, uh, immortality would be a good one. Actually, that would be a good one. But Gambit, I've always gone to Gambit sometimes. Gambit yeah. and uh, Gambit and Rogue. Rogue, I don't know why. Ro just to kind of live that moment from somebody and drain their energy. It's like, I take their memories as well. Let me see what you've been going through today. What's the effect of the, uh, the 90s X-Men cartoon? Because those two were pretty iconic in that series. They are. They were. They were. And, and that, that, I suppose they played a big part of that. Because I, I found uh, Gambit to be quiet just a fun laid back kind of character. He didn't yeah. really take things seriously. Always yeah. got in trouble. And I was like, okay, I, I do like this character. And I think that kind of swerved into Iron Man after and me kind of, I don't know. 
I suppose his journey in the comic books kind of kind of related to a bit of my journey in the comic books. And I was like, I found something in a character that I, I can really see myself in. Yeah. Uh, which ended up, yeah, it's weird. It's ended up growing into that character for some reason. Something about Iron Man that keeps going back to him. Always, always. Because sometimes I feel like he's a dick. <laughs> but then he always ends up doing the right thing. And in the comic books, same thing. He goes through his hardship and then... You know, yeah. I suppose the movies made me like him even more as well. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., who, who doesn't like that guy? Exactly. We just um, we just finished re-watching all the movies, so we just watched Endgame at the weekend again, and it just gets me every single time when he does his I Am Iron Man. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Every time. It's a, it's, 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 it's a hard hard watch. I I've actually haven't seen Endgame since the cinema. Wow. Yeah. I just can't, I can't go. Prefer? Infinity War or Endgame? Uh, Infinity War. Yeah, see, I'm exactly the same. Infinity yeah. War is definitely much, the better movie of the two. That's right, much better movie. And I like Thanos' story because that was more yeah. of Thanos' movie, wasn't it? So yeah. I genuinely loved that and I love the build-up to it was amazing. Uh, Endgames was really a fan-pleasing film. Let's just yeah. put everything in... The Russo Brothers was like, let's just put everything in there the fans are going to love. And that it paid off. It did pay off. It did pay off, I, but I'm looking for... One thing that I get asked a lot, and I think about a lot, is how much more they can continue that before it gets to a point where it's like, we're so far away from like phase one and everything mm. that happened up to Endgame that we just need to reboot some of these characters. I hate mm. the word reboot, but you know what I mean? Like, how long can this version of the MCU actually last? Kind I'm of, not sure, you know, because I was thinking that. that. I was definitely thinking about that. But I mean, as you can see, Disney have really... Disney and Marvel, I mean, what they did with that new trailer they brought out just to hype everybody up yeah. for phase four. I mean, hearing Stanley's voice made me tear up. And I, was like, I know. Oh, That's one I way so to really now? go at people. That's, like, <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Punch me right in the throat. Why don't you? Like, absolutely uh, got me. But then, you know, I mean, they won't. I, I don't think they'll reboot those original characters for a long time coming. I, I feel like. So I think another 10 years, maybe, we get with these new characters now that they're introducing. Yeah. Uh, and and you've got the, the, the Disney Plus shows as well, which are just like, <laughs> I love everybody's fans' theories. And, like, it's weird. You go on, like, in, in like Instagram and TikTok, and you're like, everybody's thinking about what's going to happen next. And I love the fact yeah. that Marvel have been able to make you think about what's going to happen next like it's so weird because in comic book world we do that before we read the next yes. issue yeah. we're like you know we've got a little glimpse of what's going to happen but what's really going to happen because it's never what it's going to be yeah so how is it going to turn out so it's an amazing journey to take with marvel took us on an amazing journey basically and i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next but I'm a big fan of the DC stuff though as well. So I want Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and Justice League 3. Like I cried so much in that movie because I was so happy like on how, like I just felt like what happened? Why didn't we get this? Like I, th yeah, I know there's I more, th there's more to I it. I feel which... like he presented something do you know what I think? I wonder if, you know, now we have this whole multiverse idea with DC. Yeah. So from, from crisis happening in the TV series to Ezra Miller yeah. turning up in, in that episode of crisis to yeah. them at fandom last year saying, you know, this is now the DC multiverse and these films can cross over with these TV shows, even if they're not on the same earth, because they're, this is all one big happy multiverse. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of chicken and the egg because maybe that only happened because Justice League came out and didn't do as well as it should have back in 2017. Hmm. But I wonder if we were at the same point that we're at now with this multiverse and we hadn't had Zack Snyder's kind of trilogy and they were to say, okay, we're going to go into this slightly darker corner of the DC multiverse and do a trilogy of movies with yeah. Zack Snyder that's a slightly more kind of less comic booky more serious take on these characters i kind of feel like people would be like yes i'm i'm absolutely down for that whereas no. i feel like when man of steel came out and it's an amazing movie and that was actually the movie that made me connect to superman i have mm -hmm. always struggled to connect to superman but that movie is what did it for me 
I just wonder if we wouldn't have had the same journey with those films if they were coming out now, if we'd had a different journey to get to this point. You know what? I can totally agree with that. And like with Man of Steel, again, it's the first movie that made people connect and grounded uh, mm. Kalel. As you know, they didn't start the, it's just weird. He's an alien. They made us yeah. know that in this and he struggled to kind of fit yeah. in with mankind. I absolutely adore Man of Steel. Uh, but yeah, you're right. If it came out in this time, like, I don't know what it would be like and how it would turn out. So just got to yeah. keep hope, I suppose. I keep hope because Justice League was, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League was just, uh, it was such a treat, such a treat. Mm. And even, I felt so happy for him. And I was so happy with everything I saw on the screen, like as a, as a visual yeah. person, like the color scheme, the sound, the soundtrack, oh my God. But yeah, Barry's scene at the end, I was in tears. I was, my brother was like, stop crying. I was like, I can't. There are a lot of things in that version <laughs> that you have to look at it and think, why did you think it was a good idea to take that out? But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's a deeper conversation we can get into. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure I'm it was just a case that what he presented to them at the time was like a, because I mean, you must have seen his original plan for what would have been Justice League 2 and 3. That right. would have put a full stop on this version of DC. And I think what Warner Brothers wanted was, I say Warner Brothers wanted a version of the MCU. I don't mean they wanted like that kind of action adventure comedy per se, but that mm. idea of something that can run for like 20, 30 years. And mm. Zack Snyder wasn't going to give them that. And I think that's, that to me seems to be what the major issue was that they weren't going to get what they wanted out of him. And that's how we ended up in this position. Damn. But I mean, what's wrong with being different? Yeah, well, exactly. That's, look at yeah, look at Joker. Yeah. yeah, when they're exactly. different, they win Oscars. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Exactly that. And oh my god, that was such a great film as well. Still disturbs yeah. me to this day. Uh, me too. Joaquin Phoenix, absolutely. He really made me feel on edge watching that movie. <laughs> yep, definitely. He really made me feel on edge. Uh, I think that's it. You know, dude. Like uh, uh, a massive thank you, guys. You guys need to follow everything in that description box at the bottom but not even that in my edit i'm gonna have these little cool <laughs> cool little gifs going past uh make sure you're following neil on instagram twitter are you still on tumblr no it was for years <laughs> i left it there for years with a like a wordpress plugin that would push every post over there but i no, it doesn't exist anymore <laughs> Oh, uh, make sure you check out the website, guys, and the YouTube channel because I've been watching it because I catch up on my news on there and the podcast. Oh my god! So, like, since you did the new you're video, just everywhere. Edit, yeah, you're just everywhere. You guys did the new <laughs> intro edit, and I was like, oh my god, that is absolutely oh, awesome! It's it's it so cool. Yeah, you have to tell me the story behind it because when you first put that out, I was like, oh my god, that looks amazing! Like, I always try and do different things in my editing, but was like is this so like, I, I i can't take total credit for that it was it was a template that uh i'd so basically i always have these ideas of things that i want to do that yeah. my skills don't quite reach to that level and i will give it a shot and i'll keep trying and then go do you know what there's probably a template out there um <laughs> so i'd been searching for something and i was just looking at like because it was a it was it's for the news video mainly but i'm using it for yeah. the podcast as well because i'm trying to put the podcast onto youtube as much as possible as well yeah. i was like i just want something that fits and and just works and mm. kind of have an idea about what that is and i like this idea of being able to show the different aspects of the things that we cover and it needs some damn good music cuz we just had we've just been using i mean it is a freebie piece of music um yeah but I think it was a case of the, the theme that we were using before was just a thing that I Googled and found was like the first thing. I was like, yeah, that fits. It sounds like it belongs in like an Arrowverse show. It'll work. Um, <laughs> so I'd been Googling like just intro videos and templates for intro videos. And mm. I found that one and I can't remember what was in the dummy version. It was like, it was like someone's holiday photos or something. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> but the fact that it's got all these different shots where it looks like pages being torn. Yeah. That's like, right. I'm sorry, but that that fits like a comic book panel with like the TV version. Perfect. So picked up the template and was like, right, okay. So we, I mean, we cover we cover comics, film, TV, comic cons, mm. gaming. That's the main things. Let's just start chucking stuff in. And then I put in bits that I liked as well. So like there's a bit of Star Trek in there. There's a bit of Power Rangers in there. Basically all my yeah. favorite things are in there. 
And I was like, but this needs a damn good piece of music. So I spent hours just going through, like Googling like epic intro music, epic trailer music, <laughs> epic music, anything with the word epic till I could find <laughs> something. And then I found the piece that we're now using. Um, and I put the two together. I was like, nope, that is it. That is like, okay. I I rendered That's it in 4K fun. as well. Cause apparently everything, I just, I'm just like, I'm sorry, if I've got the ability to do it in 4K, it's going to be in 4K. Okay. Okay. Course, so I just course. sit and I watch it on TV <laughs> and I'm just like, I just watch it back because I'm like, this is amazing. I, I, I still do that because my, my wife always says, uh, why are you watching yourself on the TV? And I was like, I want to see the quality. I exactly. need to know that it's coming out really well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, not... the, when we do the yeah. news, when I'm hosting the news video, it's just, it's literally me standing in front of the bookshelves that are behind me right now. But I'm like, it has to be perfectly dressed. This is on of camera. Course. Yeah, exactly. And you kind of feel it and everything. I've only recently... So, like, I was redoing the place uh, when we bought the house, and we never, this was like the storage room. Mm. So, it had, you know, all my collectibles and everything. And yeah. I just didn't think of an idea of how I can put this together, including my work desk and, uh, and space. And then I was like, I had a, it was just stacked full of Funko Pops. I mean, I suppose you can see that the windowsill has taken window, the yeah. Funko Pop. And then you've got this stuff up here which I still need to sort out. But uh, yeah, and then I kind of sat there. My, I was thinking about what can I do to make this look a bit better uh, yeah. and just a bit more creative. And then my wife was like, why don't you put up your favorite movie posters? And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And I Googled it and I was like, just about to click order. And then she was like, why don't you just make them yourself? Good idea. They're yeah. really cool. And they look no, really thank cool. you very much. Like th those are my, my four favorite movies of all time. Back to the Future, Iron Man. Superman the movie and Star Wars and yeah really simplified it she was like just do some art deco stuff make it look nice and simple don't have yeah. too much going on and I was like I'm, I'm that guy who loves everything going on too much going on so but it was just really nice to try something simplistic and again for the videos it's appealing for people to look at as well so yeah, yeah I'll get that random question like, oh, excuse me where did you get that poster from I was like I'm not allowed to sell that that's only for <laughs> me only that's my limited editions up there. <laughs> <laughs> limited edition of one. Yes, exactly that. The one uh, that you don't get to see on my wall is that little uh, canvas up there, which is actually mm -hmm. a picture of me being eaten alive by a zombie. <laughs> so that... I think it was the, the sec... Oh, I'm going to have to grab it now. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go on. Oh, no, it's completely stuck to the wall. Oh, no, leave it. Stuck on, stuck on with Velcro tabs. Um, <laughs> So the, I think it was the first time we actually got into San Diego Comic-Con. There's a huge stand for The Walking Dead in the middle of the room. And it yeah. was the year, do you watch Walking Dead? Yes, yes, yes. So it was the year that Glenn had gotten stuck in the revolving door uh, yeah, that's right. in the mall. And he had to watch the other guy get completely like eaten alive in the other <laughs> compartment. Um, and they'd rebuilt that set for you to just oh walk around. <laughs> so... I'd been in the queue and I was, I'd, I'd purposely gotten in the queue at a point where all the actors playing zombies were like out front, not behind. So I was like, ah, I can go in here. So I go, I had like, I'm standing there pretending to be really scared, like, oh, I'm stuck, thinking there's no one around. And then all I hear is this, like right here, is just this, oh. uh, uh. <laughs> and one of the actors had like managed to sneak in behind me and I had no idea and he was right there. And I properly properly shit myself on the spot just as martin managed to get a picture of it and then my sister had oh, it made into brilliant. a canvas so that exists awesome. on the wall uh I'm, I'm gonna have to request that picture so yes, i can I will... pop it up in the video that'd yeah, be awesome I'll send you that picture that'd be awesome so i can pop it up into the video uh <laughs> but no i'm not gonna take too much of your time dude uh, it's been uh a pleasure. i want to massive massive thank you for for joining thank us for on the me. brothers geek out podcast you're welcome uh i'm Gonna, we're going to talk more because I feel like it's always nice to get different uh, opinions and guests on the show. Uh, yeah. We do the weekly podcast, the Brothers Geek Out podcast, which comes out Sunday evenings, where we talk about most of the crazy geeky world things uh, with my brother in Singapore. But I'd, I'd love to get you on the show one day after a movie comes out and just kind of get your thoughts on it as well. Yeah. It'd be a nice little segment really to get one. you on there. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, as I said, all the links are in the description. If you guys are actually listening to this on the various platforms we have now, I'm not going to name them all. I used to name them all. I know it's it just it's impossible, <laughs> especially with podcasts. There are so many platforms that I don't even realize we're on until suddenly it says like you have charted in like 
I don't know, like Hungary on the get your pods here podcast chart. And I'm like, what? Okay. It's so Fair weird enough. because now I'm like, I'm not going to say that like, we're on all streaming services at the moment, but <laughs> if you do want to see, <laughs> if you do want to see our pretty faces, go check out YouTube guys. It's, uh, go check out the YouTube, go, go to Kibla Ahmed, our YouTube channel links again in the description. Uh, but yeah, Neil, thank you so much. Uh, for joining us and uh, I really hope to catch up and see you guys in the flesh soon definitely yeah hopefully soon at some sort of event somewhere in the world hopefully so, like, bring I'm, back I'm, yes the, uh, is the, I swear they've got one coming soon but yeah bring back comic con is actually on in July so hopefully London Film and Comic Con I wonder what that's going to be like it's the weekend of my birthday as well <laughs> <laughs> so you know double celebrations of course, of course, of course. You'll probably see my face there running around if it's all safe and regulated as it should be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it'd be good. I 